Welcome to the Affordable DC Generators YouTube channel and today we're going to talk all about inverters and they are the Swiss Army knife of power generation and that they work off of a DC power supply to give us AC power for our regular house loads that we would need 120 volts AC to power. And so what we're doing right now is powering these devices through the inverter and we're going to talk about how we can connect this and use this in a house or in a vehicle and on the go. So this particular inverter we have a couple different connections. 12 volt DC through these cables are going to the power box. So inside the power box we've got a battery. It's a regular 12 volt lead acid. And inside the connections are made providing 12 volt DC. And this inverter has two connections on the AC side. This one in particular has a built in transfer switch. So not only does it have 120 volts AC output to go to our regular loads. In this case I've got a refrigerator uh, a radio, could be your cell phone or laptop, and then I've also got a light, just to kind of show you visibly how things are working. The other AC connection is going to an outlet right behind me, and power is coming from the outlet, from our normal utility power, into the inverter, and then going to the house loads. What this is also doing, plugged into utility power, is keeping my battery charged and maintained. And I'm going to show you what the display is reading. But in a normal situation, this particular inverter, hooked up the way it is, is keeping my battery topped off and throughputting the 120 volts AC from the utility for my house loads. Now what we're going to do is simulate a utility outage by disconnecting it from the plug and we're going to see how the inverter really kicks in. Now, I've got mine mounted in a rigid toolbox, which is great because it's nice and sealed. I can throw it in the vehicle. I don't have to worry about it banging around and getting hit on anything. So it's a good rugged mount, and it's also weather tight. It's got an O-ring seal here. So when it's not running, I can, I can keep it wherever I want without worrying about the sensitive electronics. And when I need to use it, I can open up, make my connections, and just go. We could permanently mount this in a basement, so if we wanted to back up a load on a house, certain circuit, maybe it was the kitchen or a bedroom. I could have an electrician, if you're not comfortable with that, wire that permanently to power one load, and then obviously I would have to put my batteries next to the inverter to provide power when the utility goes down. I could also mount this into a vehicle, and it's on the go at that point, so it's a mobile power station. So you got multiple options there. Now this one is a thousand watts continuous, so that's really good for maybe one house circuit. Uh, you're not going to be running a fridge, a microwave, lights, and numerous things off of that, but you could run one of those. You could run a big fridge or this little DC, uh, excuse me, this AC um, freezer only draws 90 watts while running, which is super low and efficient. So I could run this with a bunch of lights and maybe a TV and some other things just with this inverter. Uh, I could do that running just a regular power splitter. So a couple of outlets, bring this into the room that I need, and then on the DC side I could get it, uh, a quote unquote, like an extension cord. Uh, similar to this and then go to my battery bank now that battery bank could be in a power box that you built It could be out on your vehicle So you've got a 12 volt supply sitting right in your driveway You could also run that vehicle so to run the vehicle charge the battery which then powers the inverter Which then powers my house load so you got a lot of options here that we're going to get into and that's why I call this the Swiss Army knife of power generation so what's happening right now in standby mode is that the inverter charger which has a built-in DC charging circuit, is keeping my battery voltage held at 13.5. You can see right below that that it's putting 570 milliamps, so about a half an amp, into the battery, which is 7.67 watts, roughly. And that's just keeping everything topped off and maintained, you know, what they would call a float charge, and this would be like a utility present situation. So what we're going to do now is disconnect the utility, and you're going to see what happens on this display. So right now all the loads are on. You can almost hear in the background the freezer running and my light is on. I'm going to go ahead and kill the power. So instantaneously that click inside transfers the inverter from utility power which is no longer present. Boom! Now it's running off of DC power inverting for my AC loads. And the meter does not lie. So the sticker on the back of that freezer calls it a 90 watt load and we can see here that between that, the light, and my radio is drawing about 101, 102 watts. So that's with the freezer running. So it needs about eight and a half amps to run that particular load. So if you even rounded that up to 10 amps to make the math work, if you had a 100 amp battery bank, that would go for 10 hours. 
Now, the freezer is not going to run 24-7. In theory, everything should be frozen on the inside. And so it needs to do what's called a duty cycle. It's going to kick on, bring the temperature down, then kick off. In a really insulated environment, that might only be 10 or 20 percent of the time. If it's really hot, it could be 30 or 40 percent of the time. So it really depends on the heat load outside of the freezer, what's on the inside, did you just jam a bunch of food in there that it needs to bring the temperature down. Uh, but all of this can be measured out beforehand. So that would kind of dictate the size of the battery bank. So this is where it's really going to get fun. The inverter needs a DC power supply in order to invert for my AC loads. So inside of here is that 12 volt battery. Now, if I had a DC supply like a vehicle that was running and I was using the battery inside of it and the vehicle is going to run all the time, the inverter can just keep going and going because we're not worried about the supply side on the DC circuitry. Obviously, that's not the intent. Now, that would work in an emergency, but the whole idea is we don't want to run a generator as soon as the utility goes out. That's the whole point. So what we can do is supplement using solar. Now, a system this size might give you 50 watts ideal condition. Uh, being perfectly pointed at the sun, no clouds, and that's not going to run that freezer. That's going to give you about half the power the freezer needs while it's running, but it's a good start because with a supplement solar, that's going to give me extended time on the battery. Um, but if I made a bigger array, maybe a 100-watt panel or a pair of 100-watt panels tied together, that could give me some serious increased uh, capacity on the DC side to keep this inverter going. The other solution you have is an affordable DC generator. So you could buy the kit, put this together, and you could just simply bulk charge the battery on and off. So depending on the amount of loads you have, you could look at your meter and say, well, I'm down to 50% charge, fire the generator up, give it a quick bulk charge, bring it up to 75, 80%, and then shut it down and let it cycle through again, and just keep going on and off. That conserves fuel, you don't have to hear the noise, and that's really like the optimum way to set this up. So you could bulk charge with the DC generator and then use some small solar to trickle charge it. Obviously, the sun's got to be out for that to happen, but this is going to float it and that's going to bulk charge it. And if you're not familiar with those, it's a little bit more reading for you. Or I can increase the side of the battery bank. So instead of using this little guy that's inside here, this Group 26, I could say get a couple of golf cart batteries and have 100 or 200 amp hour battery bank capacity. And then I could run my generator less amount of time so you've got some options and the vehicle wise we do make these as well this is the jumper cable kit so i could jumper my battery box to a vehicle and i could do the same exact thing to bulk charge it the whole point is that as long as we have dc power available i can invert to power my ac loads within the house so we've gone through our power outage or if we're on a mobile application there's no utility power to be present at all so we're running our ac loads and now we're going to have an AC power supply back. That could be a traditional generator, a home standby, or the utility. doesn't matter. I'm going to take my outlet, plug it in. Inverter fan kicked on. We got a click. And now the inverter has switched our AC loads from the DC power supply back to the utility. And right now what it's doing is the fans are on to remove the heat, but it's charging the battery back to where it should be at 100%. So you can see here that the inverter charger is feeding about 12 and a half amps, give or take, back into the battery bank. And it's going to keep doing that until the battery's topped off. And that's going to slowly come down over time till it floats it back to the number we were at at the beginning of the video. And so it's going to do that cycle charge. Power goes out. It's drawing power to convert to AC loads. And then when the utility comes back, it's going to top the battery off and pass the 120 volts AC through for the AC loads. That's why the inverter charger is the Swiss Army knife. So I hope this kind of gives you uh, some more information as far as how inverters work and how they can really be versatile in a, in a utility down or mobile situation as an alternative power supply to just running a generator all the time. So you've got some things to think about as far as capacity goes on the inverter. How many loads do I need to run while the utility's down? And then also on the battery bank side, how many batteries do I need? And then also, what am I going to supplement with as far as solar or maybe a DC generator? So you've got a lot of options to think about, but the point is that you can start at the most minimal amount. Just the inverter, you're going to need some cabling to connect, and then maybe go straight to your car. That'll get you through. And then at that point, maybe you're tired of running the car to keep the battery topped off. So then you want to increase the size of the battery bank. Or maybe you want to get some solar or an affordable DC generator. 
that's a sub $600 part right there and you don't need any other type of generator or vehicle to run your loads at that point. So lots of options to think about, but at least it's a starting point. Start with the basics, get one or two circuits in your house dialed in, just the necessities this could run. Uh, if you have propane or an oil furnace or boiler, uh, most of those will run off of something this size because we don't have any kind of electric heat source. There's no uh, inductive heat going on. You couldn't run an electric stove or baseboard heat or something like that. Um, that's a strip, a heating strip. But we could run if we had an oil boiler or furnace because those are just blowers or circulator pumps and those can typically run off of a smaller inverter. So you could create a backup setup for this for your kitchen, for the fridge, and maybe some lights to keep your phone charged or your laptop, or you could put this on the heating source for your house and never have any worries about uh, the power going out and then obviously the house freezing even if you're away. And you could get away with doing this without having to buy a whole house generator for eight to $10,000. Sure, it's not gonna give you that kind of capacity, but it's a starting point. Okay, it's a price point and you're getting a feature that at least you have the bare minimum to be safe for your home. So thanks guys for watching and get out there and build one.